AFC South edge rushers are dropping left and right. Yesterday, Danico Autry got suspended for six games for performance-enhancing drugs. He is an ex-Titan who currently plays for the Texans. Now, today, Arden Key just got suspended for the Titans for six games for the exact same thing. Edge was already a huge need for the Titans, and now it becomes the absolute biggest need. Hey Titans fans, how's it going? Titan Uprising here. Guys, I finally hit the 500 subscriber count and I want to say thank you to each and every one of you. It means the world to me that you guys watch the videos, chose to subscribe, comment, like, share. It, it means a lot to me from the bottom of my heart. I want to say thank you. Now let's get into this video. Um, obviously it's not good news because Arden Key is suspended for six games due to uh, performance enhancing drugs or PEDs. Uh, one day after uh, ex-Titan Danico Autry was suspended. Um, and yes, I was one of those guys that said, ah, that sucks Texans, you know. And you know, no matter what, these drug tests had already happened. It's not like karma came that quick or don't throw stones in glass houses. It was going to happen. Um, but yeah, I do feel like an idiot for saying, yeah, yeah. How's it, how's it taste, Texans fans? Getting our ex-player from us, and uh, now he is gone for six games. Yeah, it sucks when it happens to us. But I will say this. If we were to have, were to have lost Autry and Key to six games, both, on this team, whew, that would be a very, 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 very hard pill to swallow. This one is already a hard pill to swallow, but imagine losing two players. That would just, man, sucks losing Key. Um there's three players on the depth chart behind Key that the Titans were hoping to get something out of this year. Uh, one of them was a, is a rookie. Um, two of them are players that have been on the team for at least a year. And I am also, towards the end of the video, going to be breaking down two potential free agents that I think the Titans should pursue. Um, there's obviously more players out there, but two guys that I think they should go after. Now let's get into... Uh, the Arden Key suspension for six games. Now, he was suspended. He just signed a three-year deal last season, last offseason, three years, $21 million. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because this suspension voids any guarantees on his contract, and it does make it so that the Titans can move on from him if they wanted to. Now, I'm not saying they're going to, but they can if they want because it voids all guaranteed money. Um, just in case that happened, you guys might see, oh, okay, well, all right, the money part, I get it. But the Titans have cap room, so I don't see it happening. And they're going to want him to come back. They wanted a, more out of him this year after having six sacks last year in his first year with the Titans. And they were really looking for him to build on that, and I was as well. I had a lot of optimism for this guy. Um, but this was a position the Titans lacked depth in, and now they are really going to had to rely on the depth that they didn't have, <laughs> which is scary. Um, those players that are on the depth chart are Rashad Weaver, Caleb Murphy, and Jalen Harrell. We'll get into Rashad Weaver first. He's heading into his fourth year as a Titan after being drafted in the fourth round of the 2021 draft. He lost almost all of his rookie year in 2021 due to a broken fibula. And in 2022, he had five and a half sacks. Well, those five and a half sacks are the only sacks of his career because last year was a season to be forgotten for him. And he sat behind former Titan Danico Autry. He did, however, see 240 snaps last year, which was about a little over 20% of the Titans defensive plays. He was already looking to have more snaps after Autry left, and he knew that. And now he may end up in a starting role. And this is the guy that I would say is the projected one to step up. We need him. Uh, this is, on a depth chart, number one guy we need. Now, next one, Caleb Murphy. Uh, he was signed as an undrafted free agent last year after the draft. Uh, kind of a cool stat here. 
he set an NCAA single season uh, sack record with 25 and a half sacks while playing for Ferris State University. In the preseason last year, he had four sacks and he ended up making a 53 man roster, but he was mainly a special teamer when he was active last year, which really wasn't often. He only appeared in three games. And in those three games, he actually saw only four defensive snaps. And in those four defensive snaps, he totaled two tackles, which isn't horrible for only seeing the field four times. Um, hoping this guy takes a sophomore leap here, and we are really going to need it now. He has a lot of upside. And I remember watching him in the preseason games last year and thinking this guy could be special. Let's hope he is. Jalen Harrell was taken by the Titans in this year's draft in the seventh round with pick number 252. I did a video on this guy if you want to watch it. I broke down every Titans draft pick, by the way, if you want to watch any of those videos. Um, this guy, Jalen Harrell, he played for Michigan for four seasons, totaling 46 games, in which 31 of those were starts. And in those starts, he totaled 78 tackles, 19 tackles for loss, 11 quarterback hits, and eight sacks. He was a two-time honorable mention All-Big Ten Conference performer in 2022 and 2023. And he was a three-time academic All-Big Ten performer from 2021 through 2023. He did mention how his dad was undrafted. And he said that his dad kind of passed on that killer mindset to him. And he's ready to go to work and put his best foot forward. Um, not a huge, not a lot on this guy. Not a lot of info as he's a rookie. Um, Preseason is really going to tell us a lot about this guy. And we can start to break him down and see where he's um, he falls on the depth chart. He's got to make the team first. His odds are increased now with uh, the six-game suspension for Key. Um, now, there are two free agents that I'd really like to get into for the Titans. Um, I did tell you guys that in the beginning of the video. There's more than two free agent um, edge rushers that are out there, but there's two that I'm really eyeing here. And I'd be happy if they signed um, both of them, actually. Uh, but those guys are Carl Lawson and Yannick Ngakwe. Now, let's get into Carl Lawson first, who is the guy I would prefer. Carl Lawson might already be a Cowboy, though, after tweeting a star after the Cowboys lost Sam Williams to a torn ACL. And the Cowboys themselves are in need of help. Um, that could mean something by tweeting that star. Uh, or it could just be his way of saying, hey, I'm right here. Take a look at me. He wants to play for the Dallas Cowboys. You know, who knows what to look into that. But I'm sure the Cowboys saw it, too. You know. Chance this guy might not be in the market for, for very much longer. Lawson is a former first-round pick uh, in 2017, and he's arguably the top edge rusher on the market. I would say he is. Um, some people would say Yannick Ngakwe is, but I think uh, Carl Lawson is. Lawson was primed to be a big-time player after his rookie season. He had his rookie season, guys. He had eight and a half sacks, 21 quarterback hits, and 59 pressures. And that's just insane. And he did that while playing on the Bengals. That's who drafted him. He has been hurt, though. And in 2021, he tore his Achilles. But he bounced back with the Jets in 2022. And he had eight sacks while boasting a 72.8 pass rush grade. Last year, though, the Jets had a, had a lot of talent on that defense. And he was kind of buried on the depth chart there. Uh, behind guys like Jermaine Johnson, Bryce Huff. And they did uh, take Will McDonald in the first uh, round last year. Those are three talented guys. And, you know, Carl Lawson just kind of fell down the depth chart there. He's still only 29 years old, though. And if he can return to 2022 form, this guy will be an absolute steal. I say get him before the Dallas Cowboys do. Make him an offer you can, he cannot refuse. Yannick Ngakwe had recorded six straight seasons of eight sacks or more prior to the 2023 season. That's crazy. And by the way, that averages to seven sacks per year for his career. I'll take seven sacks on his defense any day. He did not do well with the Bears last year, though, in the beginning of half of the season. In his first eight games, he had two sacks. And I remember watching some Bears games. Um, not a lot just because they, they force feed, uh, bears on prime time. I feel like to us. Um, but I remember, uh, just the announcer saying that, you know, fans and coaching weren't really happy with him so much. 
you know, eight games, two sacks, you know, Chicago will boo you out of town too. But the Bears were just the Bears, right? <laughs> the Bears traded though for uh, Montez Sweat and Yannick ended up having two sacks in five games after that. And he was starting to show a little more promise, but then he broke his ankle and missed the rest of the season. I think that shows that he has a capability, but he's not the number one guy as he obviously did better once Sweat came over. Uh, they were asking probably too much of him in the beginning and you know the Bears just lacked talent across the board um, and they were an absolute mess last year. Um, I don't think he can be number one guy, the number one guy, um, but we have a number one guy in Harold Landry. So if we can have him be the number two or three, I think the upside is there for sure. That's why I would love to sign a guy like Carl Lawson. I'm um, hoping to get some upside out of him and Yannick Ngakwe. And Ngakwe can maybe even you know push up into number three. And if you have one of those guys on a depth chart that I talked about earlier that are already on the team um, with guys like Rashad Weaver, Caleb Murphy, or Jalen or, uh, and Jalen Harrell, if one of those guys ends up, you know, knocking out one of the free agent signees, that's okay. You have these guys for years. You're most likely going to sign Ngakwe or Carlson on a um, one-year deal. I mean, one year, four or five million dollar deal. It's most likely what you're going to do. I'd be okay with signing uh, Carl Lawson for like a two-year deal, personally. Just take a little gamble on him, uh, make it so you can get out at the end of this year if he doesn't, you know, do anything structured appropriately, which Rand can do. Um, oh, but guys, we have a lot to think about here as far as edge depth goes and probably a starter because I don't, who knows if a starter's on his team opposite Harold Landry. We were hoping that was going to be Arden Key. Obviously, it's not going to be Arden Key for the first six games, so we need somebody. And I don't think the Titans are going to stand pat with the depth chart they have. I can't see it happening. I would love for Rashad Weaver or Caleb Murphy to jump up the depth chart. I shouldn't say jump up because <laughs> they're right there now with Arden Key being gone and and, um, and the departure of Autry uh, this, this year when he went to Texans. So they're right there. I don't know if this staff can bank on them. I think, you know, today they had padded practice. They're going to see a little bit more of that um, over the next few days. They're going to start to see more. They're going to start to feel these guys out. Obviously, football becomes football with pads on. So they're going to start to feel these guys out, see if they really do have to make a move in free agency. And I think they should anyways. Go out and get Ngakwe or Carlson. Just go out and do it and get the depth on this team. And guys, yeah, edge is a huge need now. And it, it, it surpasses linebacker, which linebacker was kind of there a little bit too, but in safety. But it surpasses uh, those needs for sure. Edge is the number one need for this team. Guys, let me know what you think down below. Are you okay with the Titans standing pat? And with the depth chart they have now, they're, they're standing pat. They're waiting for Arden Key to come back after six games, and they're going to roll with the squad they have. Or do you want them to go out and get someone like Carl Lawson or Yannick Ngakwe or somebody else that I didn't mention? Like I said, those are two guys I want. Um, there's more guys out there, but I think those are the top two. Is there somebody else? Let me know what you think down below. And as always, tighten up.